Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? I have just started planting beans in this field, we finished doing the cultivating and I've noticed something right there, look, see, and he's stopped again. With the hired help, if there's not much room to turn at the end of the field, they stop quite a way before the end of the field and they'll just turn around. I've seen it once happen in the Sosnovka map and I didn't really think anything of it um, but now I've kind of noticed that if you don't have a lot of t a room to turn they will just turn early and you'll be left with patches of field that aren't done properly. Now all I've done is a couple of strips along the bottom end of the field to give them um, just to give the help a little bit more room to turn down the end here so I'm just going to leave him go here oh that's it's her today I'm going oop, I'm in the way I'm going to leave her go there, she's going to plant beans in the field there and we are going to carry on over here, I've got lots of things to do today. Before I do any of that though, my weekly question and your card should be coming up here so that you can click to vote. I am going to buy either field 1 or field 6 because I would like to plant poplar trees in it and harvest them eventually and sell all the wood chips down here at the sawmill. So which one do you want me to get? Field 6 is about the same size as field 12. Field 1 is going to take a bit more work, but we'll have a much bigger harvest out of it. It's your vote. It's your game. Head to the comment section. Let us all know why you're picking it. And don't forget to click up here to actually cast your vote. Right then. Um, before I go any further, this one is absolutely filthy. So I do need to just clean it off. Um, I don't like to use the care wheels and people I've spoken to quite a few people about the whole care wheel situation when it comes to plowing because I said you wouldn't use the care wheels um, the row crops um, depends how you want to refer to them you wouldn't use those when you are plowing and some people said that they actually do have uh, row crop tires on when plowing which I thought was a bit unusual so um, it doesn't happen very often but people do do it and it doesn't actually completely destroy their tires Although people have pointed out that the newer tractors with... Why isn't that cleaning? The newer tractors um, with uh, uh, your four-wheel drive with um, extra sort of... Because four-wheel drive moves the front wheel slightly faster than the back wheels, which is how you get a really good grip on the tyres. Um, it can be more damaging to the wheels if you're using four-wheel drive than if you're using a two-wheel drive tractor to do your ploughing. Um, but people do use the both of them to do yeah, they, they use the row crops to do ploughing so anyway um, we've done cultivating I chose not to do ploughing and for some reason my loader arm apparently is unwashable let me just try starting up the tractor a minute and move around a bit maybe if I I might have to take it off I suppose I could maybe I've got to do that so let's just change to the front and put it down low-ish to the ground. If I take that off and back out of it, now will it let me clean it? Because that is absolutely disgusting and we would like to clean it. So let's just start up. Now my main plan today is to do some... Ah, there we go, now it's cleaning. So apparently you have to remove the loader arm in order to be able to wash it. You're not allowed to wash it while it's on the tractor. Not quite sure why that would be the case. Um, anyway, I am planning to sell that silage today because if you remember at the end of the last episode the silage came up It was um, it said that the bunker is now ready. We already have leased the necessary um, What do you call them? Uh, conveyor belts conveyor belts. We have leased the necessary conveyor belts in order to do this so we have just got to go to the shop with this tractor and we will tow the conveyor belts up to the um, the biogas plant. I'm sorry, I keep forgetting all the names of everything this uh, today, which is a little bit. I know, I know. I'm <laughs> I'm usually fairly slow on a lot of the names, but I, I do sort of generally remember most of them. But I am forgetting most of them today, so I apologise for that. Um, I'm just, yeah, obviously not on form today. I'm. Very, very sorry. So I'm going to go and get what I need. Um, I need a minimum of the, the small one that collects it off the ground, the end one that tips it off the other end, and one middle one. So we're going to have to make at least three trips. Uh, let me just lift that one up out of the way. We're going to go in cab for this, I think. Now, I did have a piece of paper here somewhere. And I have my piece of paper. I have, oh, we do need to remove that. We need to take that back to the yard at some point. We took the blades back with us. 
So I have been driving at the correct speed when I've been going through the town. Um, I've been driving at 25 miles an hour, um, which I've got to be honest. Oop, I want that button. Um, oh, and the, the bridge thing. I've never seen this before. Is this a common thing in the States, driving at 15 miles an hour over a bridge? Never seen that before, and I realise I haven't been sticking to that particular speed limit. Um, your speed limit in the town is 25 miles an hour, and someone called Mr. Checky, he told me that uh, generally you could go up to 5 miles an hour over the speed limit and no one would stop you. The police wouldn't bother. So we could technically go up to 30 miles an hour. Um, and not that we could do that in this tractor anyway. This tractor has a maximum speed of 26. Um, but, now this is the thing. The 25 miles an hour has come as a little bit of a surprise to me because here in the UK all built up areas occasionally you'll have a speed limit of 40 miles an hour but almost exclusively built up areas have a speed limit of 30 miles an hour you're 30 miles an hour in built up areas occasionally you'll have some places where it's 40 miles an hour but that's kind of rare any um minor road so not a what you would class in the states as a highway what we call a main road so it's a dual carriageway or a motorway anything like that um, so that's a highway or a freeway. Um, for us, those are 70 miles an hour. That's the limit on those. It's always 70 miles an hour. And any other road that isn't marked by any... Um, doesn't have a set speed limit anywhere on it, the speed limit for that is 60 miles an hour. So really in this country, there's only three limits you ever need to worry about. And that's 30 miles an hour in a built-up area, 60 miles an hour unless you're on a dual carriageway or a motorway, which would be, I guess, your equivalent um, would be a highway or a freeway. I'm, I'm, I think that's what you call them. Um, and those are 70 miles an hour. So we've only got three speed limits that we've ever need to got to worry about. And I've never seen speed limits on a bridge, um, unless it's one of the great big suspension bridges. And suspension bridges, the speed limits on those are usually 30 miles an hour. So, yeah. Um... This 25 miles an hour, is this a common thing? Do you, do you, are a lot of towns limited to 25 miles an hour? I'm, I really like that we're playing here on this US map because I'm learning a lot about the states. You guys are filling me in on so many little details that I just never had a clue about um, and would never have thought about unless, you know, I was in a situation like this where I'm having to sort of deal with it. Um, so, yeah, this is my query for today. If you'd like to head into the comments section and tell me about it, is 25 miles an hour a common speed limit for in a town? Um, because personally, I've never encountered 25 before. We always have 30 miles an hour. Um, and what are you... Oh, also, yeah, what, what about freeways and um, your highways and your freeways? What's your speed limits on those? Because we're always 70 miles an hour on those. There's dual carriageway and motorway for us. Those are always uh, 70 miles an hour. You don't have anything higher. And... It always used to be that you just knew where the police were and then you slowed down for where they were. But now in a lot of places, they started to put in average speed checkers. And basically, you've got these cameras that um, take a picture of you every couple of miles or every mile or so. Um, and then they do a quick calculation to see how long it's taken you to get from the first camera to the second camera and so on. Um, and if your average speed exceeds the speed limit of the road, then you get a... Um, a fine will turn up in the post and your points on your license. So um, that's what they've done to combat speeding in this country. You don't have them everywhere. But anyway, this is really dull. This is really boring. All I'm doing is driving along the road. I'm going to take this one and I'm going to go back and get the other conveyor belts that we're going to need. Um, get them all up to the BGA and then I will meet you up there and we will see about selling our silage. And we are almost there with the last one. It's a bit inconvenient that you can't stick all these together and tow them all in a big long line, sort of a, a train of conveyor belts. Um, you've got to go and take them one by one, which does slow things down quite considerably. But, I mean, overall, it's not too bad. So, in order to get that signage into this bin here, we're going to need to... Um, we get into the conveyor belts and we move them manually like that. So we'll just park this tractor over here, switch him off, 
Now, first of all, we want to open up the silage clamp. So we come over to here, and fermenting silage 100%, open silo, you press R. And we've already seen that on the other one. You can come up to the other side, and you could open that as well, but you don't need to. Once you start taking it from here, um, it will uh, remove the wrapper from the top bit. So we'll get into, hang on, let's position this one first. So you get into it like this, then you need to um, start engine, first of all. Now, if you fold it, all it does is it moves the wheels. Now, let me show you. I'll show you the folding bit. If you fold it like that, and then it's running at the moment. If, if I climb out, is it going to do it? Oh, no, no, you hire a worker to do this because... Um, then it'll do it automatically. There. If I hire the worker, what it does now is it, it just rotates it from side to side. If I dismiss the worker, the if you see down there, it's got Y, it's got change angle. At the moment, it's on 5 degrees. So if we take that up to, say, 25 degrees, and then I hire a worker again, it'll rotate it through 25 degrees of a circle, and then it will go back through. And what this is for is for piling up sugar beets and potatoes and stuff. Um, as it goes on to the conveyor belt, it will slowly move around in a circle and spread the heap out a lot more. So, I mean, you can do it. Whatever you're putting onto the conveyor belt, you could do that too. So, but we're not actually going to do that. Um, we don't want to use that one, um, and we don't want the belt folded either. So we will put the wheels back how they were. We want to lift the belt up so it goes up a bit higher. And this is the bit that you kind of... that you you got to... Um, once you've turned it on, you can move it round. But yeah, you, you kind of need to zoom right out to be able to see this accurately. You want you um, because especially this belt because it does extend a very very long way. You get a long extension on this belt. So you use the mouse controls. I think you could also use um, the the keys for it. Can you just 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 try M? Right. N is lowering it down. Uh, M isn't doing anything. J is raising it, and N is lowering it down. There. So what about extending it? K, L, M. That's not doing anything. Uh, have we got any others? I'm just trying to see if there's... Uh, if I press B, no, B ain't going to do anything. And H hires the hired help. So we can raise and lower with the keys, with the J and N keys. But uh, M and K and L, they're, they're not doing anything at all. So... Yeah, generally you would use the mouse. So we can raise and lower it like that. And then if you use the other mouse button, you can extend it. And it does extend a really, really long way. If you look at that. You get a good long extension on that belt. So we want to zoom right out. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move it round a little bit like that. I Actually, I'd like the extension not to be quite that long. So we'll extend it back quite a ways because I want to come back back a bit further right that seems to be fairly well positioned over the middle of that bin so we won't do anything just yet I'll leave that one so let me come out of that one and then I want the middle belt I'm going to oh, help a G is blocked by an object I need to oh no, no actually I don't know what that's gonna be let me go over and see what he's doing a minute helper G is not blocked by an object helper G has gone for a drive I don't quite know why he's gone all the way up here into the hills. He looks like he's been turning around okay up to this point, but now he's actually got himself completely and utterly stuck. What's the matter with him? Oh. Oh, actually, I, um, I lowered it down and that actually worked. Right, for some reason he drove all the way up. I think what he did is he got stuck on the hill there a little bit. So it would appear... Right, is it? Is he actually planting all the way to the end? Right, he does look like he's planting all the way to the end. So what I'll do is I'll do just a pass along here just to give him that extra little bit of space. Let's lower down. And I'll just use a hired help to take it to the end. He'll probably stop before he gets to the end because there's quite a big gap there. Uh, not a very big gap. Yeah, see, there he's, um, he's not going to go. So I'll do that. I'll go all the way to the end. Right, I'll get this. I'll get this going again, and we can get back to those conveyor belts. Right, that one is in position, and 
No, he's not moving. I thought for a minute he was moving. Then we want this one, and this one will go in the middle. And I suppose actually we wouldn't need this one to start with. We could just... Are we even going to need this one at all? I think we will. We'll, we'll do it. We'll, we'll just assume that we're going to need this one as well. Now, this one's got a couple of settings on it. You can extend the belt so that it... Uh, let me put that back in the right place. So we we don't we don't we don't want to do that. That's got to stay still for a second. Right. We can extend that one. Which way? Ah, right. If you 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 can raise and lower the the backs. We want to raise the back so that it's above the other conveyor belt. Then if we use the other button, yeah, that's it. That one will move out like that. We can also raise that one up if we want to. We're not really going to need to do that, but we do want to bring it out a little bit so that it's beyond the end of the hitch, which means that we can then move it from side to side. So let me just put that back in there. And then we want to drive it over here. And... Right, what I'd really like to do, I think I'm going to have to sort of turn it like that. I don't think I'm going to need this one to start with, unless I, I'm going to have to move this other belt back out the way, I think. This one here, I think we're going to have to reverse it up. He stopped. Let's reverse it up, and we'll put the belt right back in for a minute. There, that's uh, that's fairly high. That's that, That'll do quite nicely there, just to start with. So that then we can get this one here, and I want to straighten him up a bit. It's very, very slow, if you notice. So I'll, I'll shrink that one right back down for a second. And that one wants to come over here. And it's going to need to be... It's going to have to have its tail end over the top of the other belt. So we're going to bring it round like this. And the important bit at the moment is getting that other end lined up. Then we can get the front end exactly where we need it. I'll just come back a little bit further and rotate around. You can, if you want to, you can join the conveyor belts together. They do have hitches so that they will uh, join up together. But I've, no, I've found that if you do join them together, it's much more difficult to maneuver them if you need to like change them ever so slightly afterwards. So I find it better not to actually join them together. Right, that one can go there, and he could just stop just like that, I should think, actually. Um, I might, if I extend him out and then bring him back this way, that might actually make the job a lot easier. I can move him out the way a second, then I can come over to this one here and I'll get into this one. Start this one up. Now this one you need to fold up because you can't drive it round. And also once you fold it up, he will start picking up stuff straight onto his belt. So he started to pick up there. Now I'm going to bring this one over and it'll pick stuff up in front of the belt but it won't pick up very much stuff behind the belt. So that's as close as you want to get. Now I think that's going to be lined up quite nicely. Come over here and I will get into this belt. Now I want to rotate that back. It's not the easiest to sort of get the, the mouse controls on it to start with. Um, you, you do just have to kind of play around with it a bit just to experiment with what mouse control does what. Now that's going to go up there and it's going to stop. Everything is full. And the reason is it doesn't automatically tip straight into the silo king up here. What you've got to do is you've got to get into this one and then you've got to do the left control I so that it will tip anywhere. Or I've got a button actually programmed to that on my steering wheel. So yeah, let's just turn that one off now. There, it does the whole lot all in one. It actually worked really well. That is fantastic. So you look at the money that is pouring in. We just, I mean, we just had another expense of like 10 grand somewhere. Um, it's a job to keep up with where all our money is going, but it is slowly trickling away. Now I'm hoping that we've kind of leased everything that we need to lease. The average, just the general running costs are fairly minimal. Um, obviously the tractors are gonna be a bit because we have our hourly rates. But it's that initial whack of money when you first lease the machines that seems to be costing us. But we've got all of the equipment that we need now. We've got... Um, well, we haven't got stuff for silage anymore. I got rid of that. We do have mowers. 
we've got these conveyor belts we've got uh, stuff for planting crops and we've got the combine um, so we're, we're, we're sort of doing alright and we can do some contracting jobs as well so really the next step is expanding our property and getting more fields that's what I would like to do next so let's just come over here and I'm going to bring up the F1 thing again we got 200,000 litres here that is a lot of silage. Let's open the silo further. I said open silo. It hasn't done it anymore. Maybe I should come down here and do it. Right. Open silo there. It leaves a bit in the middle. I'm guessing you've got to um, just take enough silage to get a bit closer to it. So we're still at 200,000 litres of silage in here. And it's just going to keep pouring it in. And it would appear that with our five times speed it's just going to go continuously forever until this silage has all been used up this is fantastic we're going to make a fortune out of this and we're not going to really have to do very much if you have it on one time speed it did start to um, use it up I noticed that when I was doing the time lapse when I was selling the silage but at the moment it doesn't look like we're having to do a great deal I will move that one forward in a minute we've got a little spot of silage there that we want it to use up and then we can move that one forward and we've got quite a bit of extension available on these belts so I don't think we're going to need to go and get the next one so far we've had nearly 10,000 and we've not really used a lot of silage up have we now when is it going to uncover that little bit there I'm assuming it will at some point must do we've uncovered everywhere else uh, let's just enter shredding it at the moment see it's coming all the way back there hmm right I'm going to allow some of this to run through and then I will get back to you when we are ready to move our conveyor belts a bit okay I've moved things around a little bit and for some reason this bit of silage in the middle is an opening and I have no idea why I've been sort of playing around with these belts a little bit moving them a bit and nothing we've got twenty seven thousand dollars at the moment um, but why this isn't opening properly I really don't know this one's a bit of a mystery to me I thought it was just supposed to do it automatically I'll come back here and get this little bit back here and we'll try some more um, but generally you've sort of seen the idea now and the, the belts aren't the fastest but you can just leave them going once you've got them set up you can just kind of put them in place and then just leave them slowly running and they will just slowly chug away taking away all of the, the silage especially if it's piled up if we had a load more now someone did say in the comment section um, it was a few days ago now um, that I think it's two million liters that the each clamp takes so if you've got two million liters in here I don't know if the belt um, the, the pickup point for this belt I don't know if it actually pulls through the wall or not so if you put one there would it take silage from this side as well as this side that I'm not sure about because I know they do have sort of quite a large area that they gather from but I mean that aside you've got one two three four five clamps here so if they're ten mil if they're two million each that's ten million liters of silage that we could potentially have in this clamp here now look I've got it running here and it's pulling from all the way over there but it's not pulling anything from this bit in the middle and I wonder if maybe I need to use a uh, there's got to be there's got to be something that is causing it to do this maybe I need to log out log back in again something like that but I opened the clamp from both ends and this is what we're getting it's kind of leaving a big gap this is big hole in the middle don't know but anyway I will have sold all of this silage by next episode and my weekly oh and by the way while I was getting the the conveyor belts up here we got a great demand for barley that's at six hundred and eight dollars per ton at Gomez Ridge acres which is actually not the best price that we could get for it anyway so it doesn't really matter um, 
we're planting beans and I'm hoping to get a few more beans there and then we should be able to get a good price for those at least I'm hoping so um Gomez Ridge is this one down here just the opposite side of it's quite close to the shop there just the opposite side over that um and oh that's just a silage cell point I think you can sell manure up here as well and I think uh slurry and manure is down at Mary's farm down there but we don't have any animals at the moment so that doesn't really matter my weekly question this week if you want to vote remember just mouse over up here and click on the um click here to vote bit uh do you want me to buy field six or do you want me to buy field one i'm going to be planting poplars at some point and we will be doing a wood chip harvest from those uh field six is about the same size as field 12 that we've got field one is quite a bit bigger so obviously it's going to take a bit more for us to be able to buy it um but i would like to get one of them and then we can get it planted with those poplars and hire the correct machinery in order to harvest it. So it's your vote. It's your game. Let me know which one you want. Head into the comments section. Tell everybody why you're voting for the one that you're voting for. See if you can persuade them to vote as well. That is pulling in from a really long way away. Hmm. I really don't know why it's doing this. It's acting really strangely. I'm not quite sure what's going on. It might be that i got to log out and log back in again or something like that. Um, I'll figure it out. But I will have sold all of this silage by the next episode. If you enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give me a like. And if you really enjoyed it, please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. But until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.